Good day. So about a month ago, um, I stumbled across a interview, um, a video interview um, with True Default um, on his hair programming language. Um, I was interested in just seeing what's going on there. Um, and the interview was great. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, Chris Jenkins, the interviewer, is a fantastic interviewer. Um, I saw the great, uh, great questions. Um, it's very knowledgeable. Um, I really enjoyed the interview. But I know I'm not going to use hair. Uh, it's not the style of language um, that I find easy to learn and come back to. Um, it's very similar in, in its syntax. Um, not exactly in its syntax, but in the way it does its syntax um, to Rust. And from experience, other podcasts that I've done and so on, you'll know, um, uh, I struggle with Rust uh, just purely because of its density, how much um, uh, syntax there are. There isn't it. I prefer a language that's a little bit more uh, open, clear, doesn't have semicolons, easier to read, something that I can get back into uh, when I come back from working on other languages, usually. Um, so uh, anyway, loved the interview, thought, oh, I'll have another, I'll have a look at some of the other ones. And the very first one um, that is in in the list is Gleam um, with Louis Pilford, P Pilfold. I always want to say Ford, Pill Ford. Um, so, uh, and that was really interesting. Now, this piqued my interest. Um, so much so that even when I went on to um, watch some of the other interviews, uh, I was still going back and looking at Gleam. Uh, so, Gleam, as it says in this uh, uh, thumbnail, uh, is a functional typed language uh, that runs on the Beam, which is the Erlang Elixir uh, virtual machine, uh, super concurrent. Um, with Erlang, you get the OTP um, library for doing all this uh, management of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of processes and stuff like that. Um, but uh, looking at Gleam, uh, Lovely language, um, nice, simple, straightforward syntax. Um, just the kind of thing that um, attracted me to Go, and that's why I've been doing a bunch of Go in my spare time. Uh, as you can see, no semicolons. Why do you need semicolons um, to end statements and things? Uh, it's easy to read, and it has a. It's Louis has obviously done plenty of Elm in his past. I think it's got a few libraries and things. Uh, so we have things like the pipe uh, operator for just chaining um, expressions. Uh, I always wanted to say statements, but hey. Uh, uh, anyway, super interesting. Uh, has the same idea of making sure you have good error messages because it's a compiled language. Um, so the Elm, Rust, way of making sure that you know what's going on. Um, and it not only runs on the Beam, it also runs as a JavaScript um, target. So just like Elm. Uh, so I don't have to, I, it's not, you're not stuck, stuck um, doing, you know, server type stuff and whatnot. Um, you can also write your Gleam for the back end and the front end. That sounds good. Um, and I was particularly interested um, in it uh, when I saw the Luster library by Haley, which just so happens to be um, a sort of re-implementation of the Elm architecture for Clean. Uh, so that's a win-win. We've got the Beam and we've got Luster. Uh, Elm. Uh, so I thought, well, I've got to, I've got to play with this. Um, so I've obviously um, done a little bit, a uh, 
looking around and found that one of the best ways to get your luster um, application into something that's easy just to like stick in anywhere is ES Gleam. And there's a lovely article here um, by Erica. And they did that after they'd been using Vite. Um, so I'm going to be using that as a reference um, because what I want to do is I want to take my Elm based WordPress widget and see if I can convert that to Gleam. So this is what we have at the moment. Um, Quanpexy, all it does is every five seconds, I've got it on the auto refresh. Um, it goes, looks at your WordPress cron and shows you what's there. All the schedules um, and what events are about to fire on that schedule. So once an hour, we're going to have this delete thing going on twice a day. We have all these little events um, and you can, with this WP Cron Pixie, uh, if you're like, oh, actually, I want those delete expired transients, I want that to run, not in 12 hours, 50 minutes and 23 seconds. I want to run it now. I press a little green arrow and that's it done. And then it's been popped back um, onto the schedule. Uh, and it's going to run in just under 24 hours. Um, and then you've got this little option here, if you say example events, and it pops in some example events, one that's always past, one that's always in the future, pretty much. Um, and then I think we've got one down the bottom, yeah. And then we've got a once only. Um, so if you fire that, um, it then just redoes itself um, for so far in the future. Um, and the, the past event again, it should just like come back as a past and the future one, it's always about 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds in the future. So that was just a way that if you haven't got any scheduled quantum events, which you should, I mean, WordPress has tons of them as you can see, and this is pretty much clean, uh, WordPress install. Um, you'll have things to see. So it's just a dinky little widget. Um, helps you see what you've got in your cron. Make sure it hasn't gone to past on all of them. Um, so it's actually ticking over. And then occasionally you can, you know, just pop them off. So that uh, was written for a, a blog post and I went through um, Backbone. Uh, something else. What was the other one? Can't remember. And then um, as a sort of reaction thing. Anyway, let's see whether we can get to the point of actually getting something in a widget with Gleam. I'm not sure I'm going to have time to get much more done because it's going to be quite a little conversion. But let's see if we can get a Gleam app running in a WordPress widget. Seems like a, a challenge. Um, so right, let's get rid of a couple of these things. Um, we'll keep that Gleam thing around and I'll keep the luster. Um, let's go do things. So uh, my plugins. Right, so this is where Quampixie lives. Let's just make that a bit bigger. Uh, and let's bump up that a little bit for you. Okay, that's really might be too big, but we'll see. Um, so as you can see, um, at the moment we have, it's obviously Elm based. Um, we have basically a source directory. Uh, we've got a make file. Uh, we've got some build artifact stuff, which comes into play when we're doing zips and things. And then there's some assets just for the, uh, the repo, the WordPress repo. Um, like the screenshot and stuff. Um, where the interesting stuff obviously is in source. Um, so we have some CSS, 
um, we have um, just one file, it's super simple. Uh, we've got the Elm file, um, and then we've got the actual uh, PHP, which glues it all together. So we've got the entry point for a plugin, uh, which is not really interesting. Um, and then in the includes is where all the actual stuff happens, what we'll be looking at in a minute. Um, and then we have obviously the JS output. Main JS is like a, uh, that's what the widget sort of kicks off from. It's the, the entry point. Um, and cronpixie.js um, is built at the moment from the cronpixie.elm. So Elm is a compiled language as well. It compiles from Elm to JS, and then you can run it. Um, and that's why I was talking about the uh, ES build, uh, ES Gleam stuff. Uh, with Gleam, it's uh, it's outputs a bunch of stuff. If you want to kind of, you need to kind of bundle it um, into a single JS. In my case, anyway, you might not, depending on what your use case is. But for me, I need a, like a little JS um, module. Um, that I can call into uh, uh, from something that's been um, added to the WordPress uh, page. So let's get going. Um, we need to work out how, this is where it gets tricky, how we're going to actually get this thing working. Right. Let's first, let's create a, a little clean app. So uh, we're in source at the moment. I'll put it in here. Um, I'll put it parallel to the Elm, but I'm not going to call it Gleam. I think I'll call it UI so that I, if I do any of this experiment again, I can just keep using that. So what we're going to do is um, now remember, this is me I hardly ever touched Gleam, so I'm going to get things wrong. Um, I'm just learning. I did a little experiment, you can see from here, um, I made a little Wibble app, which basically does um, hello, goodbye. Um, and the, the actual, um, if I, yeah, so here, the main is just going, okay, call this module, call hello, print it to the standard output, um, call by, print it to the standard output. Um, and I think, can I go, no, no, oh, I wonder if they would do that. No, okay. No worries. Um, We'll do that. The so Gleam comes along with uh, uh, an NSP language server, um, and I've got the the NeoVim. I've got that hooked into NeoVim. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. So that's why I'm getting the syntax highlighting plus I'll, I'll get, I hopefully will get some help while I'm writing Gleam, um, but it's, uh, it's still in its early days, so not everything's working. Um, but just getting there, I can see that there's another release on its way. Um, so yeah, the actual module, the say module here, just has two functions um, and all they do is do a bare return of a string. That's how these things work. Um, from Wibble, goodbye. Very simple syntax. Um, so when, oops, don't know what I did there. Uh, should be, I think it make, um, and then it just does. And then if I look at the make file, which I'm going to need to do very similar uh, in WP Pixie. Um, in this case, 
Yeah. I was using Glee script. Oh yeah, because it's command line. Yeah, and that basically compiles the, um, basically helps you run uh, compiles to Erlang and create a script. Um, which is easy to run as a executable ish. I've got Erlang obviously um, installed because it is a it is a, a runtime thing. Um, so yeah, um, it's slightly different. I'm not going to be using that thinking about it, but yeah. But you do have things like you can see here. You've got Gleam Clean for cleaning all your artifacts. Um, you've got an update I can do um, to get new dependencies and so on. Um, there's also like a format checker um because you, you can um it's built into gleam is like a, a formatter um and obviously you can do things like you can do gleam build and so on but gleam run to run modules and so on uh, and well, of course and test um you can do gleam test run tests i think i've got any tests i do Not a lot, but yeah. Um, Gleam, unit, Gleam unit, uh, and it just does calls the module there and then pipes it through. It should should equal this, and it does. So we're good. Anyway, right. Let's create a new Gleam app. Gleam new, uh, and I'm going to call it UI. So now we have a UI folder, directory. Um, I don't want that GitHub stuff. Uh, what's in the Git ignore? That's fine. We'll keep that. Uh, I might need to add some more stuff later. We'll see. Um, and can I... Well, I should be able to do a Gleam test. Okay. And I should be able to do a Gleam run. And I think it's just basically a Hello World. There we go. Hello from UI. So if I go into the source, we have a UI.clean. That's it. Super simple. Okay. Um, now I'm going to want to do A little bit more than that, I think. Even from the word from the word go, I think I'll if I want to make sure that I've got a working Lust app, I should probably put at least the example in here and see if I can get the example running in a widget in WordPress. That'll be a good test. So, Luster. Right, so we have this. Uh, let's grab that. Okay. Right, yeah. So it doesn't know about Luster yet because I haven't added that to the dependencies. Um, but yeah, so we have a main, we're going to start a simple Luster app. I'm pretty sure from my research, I'm going to probably have to change that to um, the full on application when I get going, because that gives you then effects, side effects and things. Um, but for the time being, let's keep it simple. 
and then it starts it um, and from what I remember that will be the mount point and then that is the flags which are caught passed to init and at the moment that's just zero um, and in it is basically uh, going to return a model. Um, and in this case, we've got an integer, uh, which as it goes down will be incremented or decremented. When you do an update, depending on the type of message that happens after clicking either the plus button or the minus button. So we either increment or decrement on the click that goes round the loop, goes into update, goes plus, minus, returning a new model, a message, which updates the view to show in the text the count. Cool. Okay, let's see. Right, first off, I need to fix this import stuff. So, uh, I need to come back one. So, if you look at gleam.toml, you'll see this is the uh, basically the control for it. Uh, that's the name of the project, obviously, the version. Um, and these are uh, dependencies. We've got dev and production as such. We need to, and there's also a manifest as well, so I don't know why I said obviously. Um, so this is where, as you update the versions and so on, it's going to keep a hash of it. So um, you can check that in and make sure that uh, when you check it out and uh, build your version, you're going to get exactly the same version of the dependencies and you only update them as and when. So I'm going to add uh, Luster to my dependencies. So that is clean add. And this is a runtime. So just Luster. We'll see what we get. Version 4.16. Um, so if we look at that Tomo again, you can see it's added Luster at something from 4.1 and up. Uh, and if we look at the manifest, uh, we have Luster in there as well. And then it's telling me actually it's 4.16 and here's the hash and blah, blah, blah. Okay, and here's its dependencies that they will obviously get pulled in as as and when. It's has grown actually a little bit, hasn't it? So yeah, that's cool. Okay, um, right. So it's not worth me running anything here. I just need to try and get an output. <clears throat> so I need to basically compile it to JavaScript. To make my life a little bit easier here, I'm going to say that the target is JavaScript. That's the thing I learned. Um, you can therefore, um, if I do, I'm probably not going to do any FFI, but if I were to do any um, foreign function interface type stuff, um, I think that plays in a little bit more then, but I'm not sure. But I'm not going to be doing any Erlang stuff with WordPress um, plugin. So let's see if I can get it to build a JavaScript file. So let's do uh, right bundle. 
Ah, oh, better add it first. Okay. So what we'll do is glean add the dev dependency of ES glean. And this is basically how I'm going to pull in ES build um, and then Yeah. Hopefully that works okay on next <laughs> We'll see. Uh, yeah, that should be all right. Hopefully. Okay. Oh, it doesn't actually install it there. Um, let's give this a go. Let's do gleam run minus m. That's right. Yep. Es gleam uh, bundle. Before I do that, let's check what the difference is. Okay. Check stocks. Bundles the project into a library. Source by so that will be my UI.gleam that it pulls in as a source. And then as your entry point and dist UI.js in my case as your output file. Okay. And then we have an app. Bundle the project into a single file to run with that. All right, so that will run it straight away. That's interesting. But I, I could do the app version. But before we do that, I'll just show that my JS, the main entry point, um, I pass in a bunch of flags in the current L1 um, so that I can pass in translatable strings. Uh, the admin URL that I'll be used for doing the, um, like when you press, well, everything actually, when it's doing the refresh, when you click run a cron script. Uh, we also have like a security nonce, um, and then we have some time stuff. But we have the actual schedules that come back. Uh, we proceed with that. Um, and then we, we may or yeah, then we have the toggles, for example, uh, events and the auto fresh. So they're just brilliant. And I'm going to probably want to do that on the new version with Gleam as well. I want to pass them in as flags. And I could pass in the mount point as well. Because that, that there, that app, that's the mount point. That's where the Gleam Luster app is going to insert itself into the DOM on the web page. Hmm. Okay.
Okay, so I can imagine myself basically passing flags into main and then I pass that on to init to create the model. And maybe take out some bits from it beforehand. Or, <laughs> oh, I bet I could just query. I don't. Let's see. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that. Chrome Pixie main. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch this to Chrome Pixie main for the starter. And we'll just forget about flags for the time being. Now I'm going to have to use them. Because I need the security stuff in the admin URL for sure. Okay, right. I'm just thinking too far ahead, but um, yeah, I'm going to have to be... Yeah, I definitely need to use a bundle. I don't want to use an app. So that I can go, okay, now start, rather than it just starting straight away. Um, because then I don't have the control that I need. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, they'll be interesting. Okay, I'm getting too far ahead. I'm thinking way ahead. Um, so let's first um, haven't even had right. How far did we get? Did we get yes building? No, we didn't even put yes gleaming. So let's do that. Gleam add. ES Gleam build. Okay. So it's in now. Oh. I did have it. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Now I need to gleam. Yeah, run minus m. Yes, gleam. I got way, way diverted there by thinking about how I'm going to do this. Uh, right, so let's try this and see what happens. <clears throat> okay, it did it. Bunch of warnings. So, deprecation, and then in Lustre, we've just got some unused things. V 
various imports basically. So that's not, I think that's okay. It might be, um, <laughs> if I ever work out, if this works out, then uh, maybe uh, I can do a PR to clean up that. We'll see. Um, right, so in theory, we now have a dist ui.js. Let's have a look at that. Okay. So presumably we've got a main somewhere. We have, right, uh, where is that? Near the bottom? Yeah, good. And it exports main. That's fine. Okay. So it's definitely a, a proper module. Be careful about that because WordPress, I've, WordPress 6.5 has introduced a new um, couple of functions for uh, enqueuing um, modules. But I was playing with them and I just couldn't get them to work. Um, not in an admin context. Um, I think it's something to do with the way that they're deferred and whatnot. Uh, so I'm, I can't use that. Plus that's 6.5 and Compix C. I kind of would like it to be able to work on previous versions too. So it might be I think there's a way to do a dynamic import. not used this before. All right. So this is how you would normally do it. But to do that, you enter your script basically has to be a module. And I could do that because you can change the type on your script as you load it. But I don't need to, and I could do a, a delayed import. And if I'm correct, uh, I can do, will it show it here? Yeah, you can do dynamic URLs for this type of import, whereas if you declare your import, you can't. And that comes in handy when so WordPress has, um, it likes any, uh, any scripts, CSS scripts, uh, everything else, um, to be loaded with a version param so that you can basically, um, bust caches as soon as you like update your, your plugin and you change its version. Um, 
And that way, like OP cache and various other things for the PHP code get cleaned up. Um, but also it means if you're like doing it through a CDN and so on, you, you, you get the benefit of that. You get the uh, updated version instead of the stale one. So this could be handy, actually. I might try that rather than trying to just declare. Okay, right. Again, I'm going way ahead. I haven't even tried to stuff it in yet. So let's do this. Um, right. <clears throat> We have JS there, but it's not in any way that I would really want to use it. So let's go back a bit here um, and let's just update the make file so that I can get zip and I'll try. So let's, uh, let's change that so that I get, so I know I've got the right version. And we will, so the object, uh, so this is where I'm going to put the JS that's just been built. So it can be included in the zip file for the plugin. I'm going to just call that a UI. Um, and the source for that is now source UI. Mm source UI. <laughs> Not great, but that'll do. Um, so then, well, I don't need Elm anymore, so I would call this Gleam. I don't really need this anymore. Uh, we don't have Gleam format because it's built into Gleam. Right now, here's the bit where it actually does the work. So this is going to build the object, which is the JavaScript UI JavaScript. Um, uh, so I uh, don't need the format. I'm going to change this to Gleam. And what did we do? We did. Gleam run minus M ES Gleam. Now I need to do that in source UI. And then we need to move source UI dist ui.js to the object. Okay, so for the zip, it depends on plugin build, which is um, a script that we use um, to compile all the bits we actually want into the zip. For WordPress, then yeah, so that looks okay. That just makes sure that we have plugin build script. Uh, make sure we have a thing prod. Okay, I don't need that because um, with Elm you got two variations. Um, you can basically do an optimization. I don't need that anymore. So prod can go. Actually, why is that there? I don't like that. Let's do that. And that. I prefer these days um, to have all my phony stuff with. Let's just make sure that uh, make um, doesn't try and create 
um, like a, a zip directory or a file. Um, it's like, yeah, this is a, a, a thing you run rather than a thing you build. Because uh, I don't want a published file, I don't want a clean file, I want to run a clean target. Uh, okay, so we will not have Elm stuff anymore. Although thinking about it, let's stick it here because I haven't cleaned that up yet. So we'll do that there. Um, it's a legacy thing, but we also do not want source UI build to hang around or source UI dist anymore. They were the two things that were created. Okay. So will that work? Who knows? So in theory, we're going to jump into the UI directory, build the JavaScript, and then move that JavaScript into the right place as source JS UI JS. Okay. Uh, but we're not referencing that at all yet. So source JS main. Uh, let's well, comment that out for the moment because I'm going to probably want that. So on document load, I want to import um, Now that was using back ticks uh, when doing the dynamic stuff. I could do that, or I could just like concatenate strings because it's always at the end anyway. Let's let's do the simple first. So when this is built, we want to import. So this is going to be JS dash main dot JS. We will want to be importing UI dot JS. And that's it. And then we want to go, right, so we already have a cron pixie. So let's call this cron pixie UI. So this import when it resolves, because I think that's the way it works, isn't it? Yeah. We do need to do it as a promise. Yeah, we definitely need to do this. There's a promise on import and then blah, 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 do the thing. Yeah, this is actually quite a good idea because that means I'm going to delay until it's ready. Yeah, I'm getting happy with doing this rather than doing a declare at the moment might just work okay so ui.js is going to come in as a cron pixie ui um, variable uh, and we know that on that variable we have exported main so we should be able to do 
compxc ui main and be done with it in theory and then at some point I'll stick on the uh, the version stuff I'll probably have to pass it in as a, a new variable okay uh, oh before I actually try and build I need to just double check um, what it is I'm doing in here. So we are doing an admin in queue, which is good because we're in the admin. We're not doing a global in queue. Um, We are using Chrome Pixie main as the mount point with a little bit of HTML. And then in the in queue, we have a main script handle, which I also use for the CSS um, because it's there. They're discrete. Uh, we're going to enqueue that. And then we're going to enqueue quampixie.js which we don't want and because we are going to import ui.js from main we don't need that at all so we get rid of that uh, and then I think we're good because then we localize quampixie could call that data or something or flags but won't. We'll just leave it and let's not touch too much. Uh, right. Yeah. I think we're good. Oh, it's reformatted. Oh, yeah. Okay. And normally I would be doing PHP and PHP Storm. Um, but I'm just Obviously, I'm just using NeoVim, uh, and it's also got the auto formatter. I only recently -ish switched to NeoVim from Vim. Um, it's great, really good. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to tweak your setup. Okay, I think that's okay. Let's give it a build. So, make zip, see what happens. That's not right. Is it? Oh. oh good okay yeah, yeah I updated the version to 1.5 oh, dev in the make file but not in the source so I need to be it's a little check we do to make sure we've got the right thing in there okay so um, 1.5 4.4 to dev and then down here as well right, I've only got a few minutes and then I need to start work so I better get going uh, and then, so write that. Oh, this is the entry point one, so that's changed as well, is it? Okay, that's only short. We're good. Um, yeah, and then we need to do another check, so make sure that's in the readme. Yeah, so I think we're good there. There's nothing really in there, that's fine. Okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. Don't want all that. 
So it's added in all the UI stuff because that's in there now. Uh, but we don't need that at all, do we? Uh, let's just double check what else we've got. Um, JS, Chrome, Pixie, JS. Oh, we don't need that. I can delete that. Um, it's got the main, it's got the UI, and then it's got, well, UI JS, and then it's got all the UI stuff, which I don't really, really need to bundle. Uh, yeah, we don't need the tests. Um, do need also the CSS. And they includes so that's okay so what's happened there is that in our build plugin um we have a little script that says um go zip up all this stuff but filter out these things that are just you don't need in the zip and i haven't updated that so i'm just going to do that yeah. yeah don't want elm I'll leave that in the moment because that's still there. I don't want to include that either. Okay, so let's do a make clean and then a make zip. Okay, so it's going to do compile there. Alrighty, so we have Let's get rid of that. I don't need that. Uh, is that, I think that would be a git rm actually. Git rm js. What's going on? Why is that not working? Oh, source. Ah, my fingers and thumbs today. Source JS Compexy. Oh, of course, yeah. It's not actually kept in. All right. Clean again. Make sure. When I think about it, just so that it does the thing next time. All right, well, in theory, we have a zip with all these files in it. Let's see if it does anything. Uh, we'll do it here. This could be a disaster. Yep, yeah, because we're back in the same place. Okay. It worked. Oh, wow. Okay. There you go, a little bit of research. Dividends, so what have we got? Why well, have we got an error in the console? Oh, I think that's, uh, I think that's a one password thing actually. Yeah, it's an extension thing. So I don't need to worry about that. No other stuff. Um, let's do a refresh. What have we got in here? Got the UI. So it must have got the main. It did with the right version there. 
We're good. Okay. Wow. Success. Obviously not Quampix anymore. <laughs> but at least I have a Gleam app. Uh, one in, in there. Let's have a little inspect. So yeah, so as you can see over here, updates. That's great. Okay. Uh, right, I've got like two minutes before I should really pack up. Should I do anything else? Nah. Yeah, go on, I'll tell you what we'll do. As we're on a high, let's see if we can fail bad. Uh, let's see if we can add flags. Let's, um, so in the JS, and then in the UI source, what we'll do, so let's start it off at five. Yeah. So I'm going to pass five into main. So here, this is now going to be flags. And I want to pass flags into the init tab. So instead of nil here, I'm just going to pass flags straight through. So that, in theory, is just like a, an integer coming through at the moment, in theory. And here we go. And then, well, we just use it because we are just passing in the integer that we want to start with. I should probably like, you know, if you're doing this real, you would check it before using it. Make sure there's an integer. But we're not checking at the moment. When we come to doing JavaScript, we need to decode it. And then it's also going to match a model format. But here, me, let's do a quick test. <laughs> so here we go. Um, right. What was that? Oh, it must have been there before. Okay. Right, seems to have worked. Let's just update this. I should probably like Simlink it in or something, but I do like to test that the zip builds. Okay, now in theory, it should start off at five. And it does. If I refresh from four, we get five. Refresh back to five. Perfect. OK, so that shows that in theory, when I come to do the actual proper Quampix UI, I should be able to pass in the model which is coming from the PHP backend into a JavaScript variable. Uh, pass that in, decode it, stick it in the right place and start using it. Smart. OK, that's good. All right, so. Great success, I guess. Um, so the next thing the next thing will be to convert this Elm code uh, to Luster and Gleam, or well, Gleam Luster. Um, so I've got a bunch of stuff to do there. 
as you can see. We've got various types of events. We've got ticks and things. I don't even know if we can do that. Um, no idea how all this is going to work. But bit by bit, it would be nice to build up a list of uh, schedules and then get them refreshing and all that kind of stuff. And here's things like decoders. Uh, this stuff for uh, the schedule, but yeah. Yeah, there's quite a bit to be done, but uh, it'll be interesting to see if I can convert this Elm code to Gleam and Luster. Cool, right, I better go. Um, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, take care.